Okay, guys, so now we're going to talk about um, products and actually how you can figure out how much commission and profit you're making on a bottle of shampoo that you sell. Okay, so I got a couple different examples here. Okay, so this is my little bottle of shampoo. Okay, I'm going to have three different scenarios here. Okay. I'm an artist, you can tell, right? <laughs> okay, so this is our bottle of shampoo. This bottle of shampoo only retails for $10, okay? Now, out of that $10, um, you probably paid $5 wholesale, okay? Now, how you get retail prices is you usually take your wholesale price and you double it, and that's called keystoning. And that's a standard practice everywhere in the industry in pretty much everything you buy. I think the book industry standard maybe you only go up 40%, but all retail stores, things like that, standard keystoning is always 50%. And people are always like, that's like a ripoff. You doubled it to sell it. And what they don't understand is that extra $5 is not all profit. Okay. And everything you, even the milk you bought in the store, started out at the farm and then he sold it to somebody who processed it and then he sold it to, you know, a distributor who sold it to a grocery store. And each time, a lot of times they are keystoning it. So that gallon of milk was 50 cents, then it went to a dollar, went to a dollar 50, you know, or let's see, dollar 50 to three dollars in the store, you know. So it's one of those things that each time you're doubling the cost. Um, but we're going to talk about how um, you figure out how much you're actually putting in your pocket from that $5, okay? So maybe you ordered your products and you paid $0.50 cents in shipping, okay? Because maybe your shipping cost was $6.99 and you got a couple different bottles and you, you, know, you took your five bottles and averaged it out and it ended up at $0.50 cents per bottle shipping, okay? So you got to calculate that into your costs, okay? Then maybe you did some big mailer, advertisement, you know, some kind of a promotion in marketing. That maybe you had this new shampoo, marketing and advertising, okay? To bring in some new clients and they got this, you know, shampoo at a discount or something, which you have to calculate into that as well. Um, but maybe you spent, you know, $1,200 on this mailer. And so you got to factor in that it costs maybe $2 in advertising for this bottle of product to like bring in people. Okay. Um, every customer that comes through your door, there's a cost to bring them in the door. Every new customer you get, how much did you spend in advertising it? Word of mouth, promotions, discounts, sales, things like that to bring them in the door. That's your marketing and advertising costs to have them walk through the door. You already spent money to bring them in, okay? And then maybe you have 40 cents in overhead that can include maybe your receptionist, that it takes her a few minutes to ring up that sale. Maybe it's the shelves you had to buy when you purchased the product. Most um, salon owners to bring in a new line. You have to buy the package from the distributor that includes the shelving. It includes the, the products. And a lot of times you're not just buying the products. Like you paid like $200 for that shelving that you're putting the product on. Um, or you're paying the receptionist to dust those products every day and, and to sell them and to make appointments and stuff. And so maybe you do have 40 cents in overhead from that bottle of shampoo. Okay. And then maybe you paid somebody 10% commission, which would be a dollar, because the stylist sold the shampoo, but maybe the receptionist still rang it up, you know, or you still had some overhead. Because um, an employee sold that shampoo, and so you're paying her 10%. And you got an employee over here going, oh my gosh, you just sold that for 10 bucks, and I only make 10%. But what they don't realize is really they're making just as much as you are. Because if you take all this, we're going to take out that you take all this cost and you add it up should equal eight dollars and ninety cents because you got the dollar three that's eight ninety 
Okay, you got your 890. So you subtract that from 10 and you're left with a dollar 10 profit. So profit. Oh goodness, I can't even spell. Got my little eraser. Let's go in the different kind of profit. Okay. Profit. <laughs> okay, this is my A to Z. If I misspell something, just take a letter, put it there. If I put too many letters, you can just put it back. Okay. Um, so really on this $10 bottle of shampoo that you sold for 10 bucks, you only made a dollar ten profit. And see the stylist over here that's like thinking that you like, I sold that and I only made a buck. She made almost as much as you in selling that shampoo. Okay. So let's talk about how you can increase that profit. Okay. You have the same shampoo, maybe it's the same size bottle, but it's a nicer brand. Okay. And you're selling it for $20 retail. Okay. Now you're spending 10 wholesale because that's your keystone price. Maybe you still spend the same 50 cents shipping because it was a per bottle cost. So even though you sell it for 20, you still only spent the 50 cents shipping it. Okay. Maybe you still spent the same $2 advertising to bring in that customer to buy that shampoo. Okay. And you spent the same 40 cents in overhead. Okay. And then you still spent the same 10% to the employee, but now she's making $2 because they sold a $20 bottle of shampoo instead of a $10 shampoo. Okay. But now look at my little notes. It came to $14.90 was the cost. Okay. Your profit is $5.10 this time. Okay. So do you see how by selling a higher brand, a higher retail cost, you're actually making more profit and they're more likely to buy this one from you because this one's probably similar to the one they can buy at the grocery store. It's not going to be that high quality. I don't even know how many $10 brands, unless you're uh, doing your own white label product that will retail for 10. So most of them retail 20 to 40. So do you see how now it's the same cost here, a little bit more for the employee, She's a little happier. She made $2 on that bottle instead of one, but your profit has increased. Okay. Now we'll do our next scenario. You have a $40 bottle of shampoo. Okay. So maybe this one, okay. You still, you still have your $20 wholesale cost and you're just like, man, I spent 20 bucks to sell that for four. Like that's a lot, but you know, it does add up now because you're spending 20 on the wholesale cost and you probably bought quite a few. Your order probably capped out to a place where you got free shipping because usually your supply houses, once you hit a certain order, it's like over 50, over 100, over 200 in your order, you get your free shipping. So because you probably bought more than one bottle of shampoo, you probably got free shipping on that because you spent a lot more to get the products to you. Okay. You still are going to spend the same $2 in advertising. Okay. And we're still going to give you the same 40 cents in overhead. Okay. Now that your 10% to your employee is going to be $4 this time. Okay. So your cost, it's going to be $26.40. I want to make sure you can still see that. It's at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to put a little arrow so you can see the, the profit. Okay. So you take your 40, subtract out your 26. Now your profit is $13.60 in profit. Okay. So do you see how that totally increased your profit? Your employee's happier because she sold a bottle of shampoo and made 
$4 instead of $1. So which bottle of shampoo do you think that employee's gonna recommend more? She's gonna recommend the one that she makes more off of, okay? This one probably is what the customer really needs if they're coming to the salon for services and they're getting colors and treatments. They probably want a really good high quality shampoo that's gonna keep their color fresh, vibrant, it's gonna keep their hair moisturized, give them the protein they need, okay? So now you just made 13 in profit, she made four, now everyone's happy. But do you see how you have to kind of know your costs? You kind of have to know, okay, some salons are like, well, I don't want to sell this one because it cost me 20 to get there. And so to buy five bottles, like I'm spending a hundred bucks, just to put it on my shelf. And they're not, they think they're making 200, but really they're not, you know, really they're making 1360 times five, you know, but is it still worth it to them? Because that bottle took the same amount of time and energy to sell as the first bottle. You're telling your client what you recommend. Usually, I'm talking to them as I'm doing their hair and I'm saying, oh my gosh, your scalp is dry, like I would recommend X, Y, and Z. And then if I use it, sometimes the back bar products you can't, but you could have a bottle of this sitting at your station, a retail size bottle, and you can go, this is the shampoo I used on you, this is the one I totally would recommend for your hair today. And they're holding it. And they're looking at it, they're reading the ingredients, they're reading all the benefits on there while you're doing their hair, while you're cutting their hair, while you're styling their hair. And then you use like a root lifter or a shine or something and you hand it to them and you say, hey, this is what I'm putting on you today. Sometimes by the time they're done, you might have five or six products in their lap, okay? And then you can say, which one of these do you wanna go home with today? Or do you want me to send you home with all of them? Because you want to remember, go for the no. You want them to tell you when the sale is over. So it's like, hey, do you want to take all of these home with you today? Keep up your, your hair, make it good, have it last till you come in next time. And most of the time, they'll put back the ones they don't want and keep the ones they do. Or they might go, yeah, I can never get my hair to look as good as you do. I want to take all these home with me. And then you're going to ask them if they need a blow dryer or a curling iron or some hairspray or anything else you didn't use, but you might sell as well because they probably have other needs. And sometimes they leave your salon and they drive to the grocery store and pick up the things you didn't recommend. It's true because they'll leave that salon and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. I'm out of hairspray at home. And I want this hair to look good tomorrow when I go to work. So they drive to the grocery store and pick up the products that you forgot to recommend them. Okay. This took just as much effort to sell as this in talking about it and ringing it up. So why not sell what they need, what they want and what you have and what will make a win-win for everybody? Because this is definitely a win-win for them because their hair is going to be in better shape. You're taking care of them. The color is going to be vibrant. It's not going to drab out. And it's a win-win for you because it's making it worth your time and effort. Okay? So that's our breakdown today of what you're actually making on retail products.